七六年嘛。我有的时候我说我是小王或者是小丽。<笑>爱吃宫保鸡丁，怀念在北京上学和踢球的时光。从公派留学生到异国总统。他与中国有着怎样的奇妙缘分？见证中国的改革开放，感受以人民为中心的发展理念，他如何借鉴中国经验提升本国经济？埃塞俄比亚前总统穆拉图·特肖梅接受高端访谈独家专访，敬请收看。关注国际焦点，洞察世界风云。大家好，欢迎来到本期的高端访谈，我是邹韵。今天我们要对话的是一位来自非洲的老朋友，他曾经在中国求学十余年，获得了北京大学的博士学位。学成归国之后，他与中国的不解之缘并没有中断。二零一三年，在高票当选总统之后，他将中国作为第一个出访的国家，他就是埃塞俄比亚前总统穆拉图·特肖梅。对于中国，他有着怎样的深厚情感？他认为中国的发展模式为其他国家提供了怎样的借鉴意义？又计划如何续写与中国的不解之缘呢？今天我们一起在对话中寻找答案。Dr. Shishomei, great honor to have you with us here on Leaders Talk. You refer to China as your second home. Well, given that you study here in China for over、um, a decade, how does it feel every time you return? When I come to China, whenever I come, I feel like I'm coming back to my old house, my second home. The imprints I have about China, especially during my student years, is very deep. I remember about my teachers, my classmates, Chinese, my Chinese、uh, dorm mate, because I had a Chinese student. Uh, to be、uh, my doormate, to improve my Chinese and to help each other in our uh, in our uh, daily life and studies. So I remember all that. Of course, I do also remember、um, what Beijing looked like, what、um, the surroundings of Peking University looked like then. When I、um, In 1976,、uh, really, it had a very different shape and、uh, beauty. Of course, they, they, there was、uh, a beauty of itself.、Uh, so uh, when uh, I look into uh, look from 1976 to 2023, it is over 40, near quite. quite、uh, Uh, far, near to 50 years,、mm -hmm. uh, so you can you can imagine how big difference, how big、uh, change my schools, my my universities、uh, have、uh, have acquired. 1976年，高中毕业的穆拉图以埃塞俄比亚公派留学生的身份来到中国学习。It was on a government scholarship, and it was not easy to. Uh, to get that that opportunity, that chance, because it was only for five students from from Ethiopia、uh, to be chosen among thousands of my peers who were、uh, high school graduates. It was、uh, my first trip abroad. Beijing Language Institute is the head of the Beijing Language Institute. Mu Lato in the first stop of his study was to learn Chinese. Dr. Shashomi, we want to show you something. I don't know whether you still remember this.、Oh. <laughs> so this is your student ID from Beiyu, Beijing yes,、uh, the, the, Language let, let me, and Culture University. Yes, please. Should you name? Uh huh. That is Be Beijing Yanshan. Because you studied in both、uh, Beiyu, Beijing、uh, yeah. Language Culture University, as well as Beida, Peking University,、yeah. all combined for over ten years,、mm -hmm. and we have a special friend, actually, who prepared a surprise for you.、Uh, do you still remember and recognize her? Oh, she is my Chinese teacher. Yes, do you Wang still? Wang Laoshi. Yes, Wang Laoshi, and she has、um, asked us to send her wishes to you. 
，记得你七六年来中国学习，而且第一个就到了我的班。我记得呢，你非常认真，求知若渴，总是学，而且呢，呃，你我从你的眼神和你的表情来看，你好像有。不是只为自己学习，好像有一种为祖国学习的那种劲头。我记得你跟我说过，你说啊，我将来要好好学习，我回去要建设我们的国家，把我们的国家也建设的越来越好。那时候你就有这个志向，而且你这个有这么大的抱负，所以你后来呢，呃，你当了总统，这是必然的，你做得很好。She was very strict to me, <laughs> very strict. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we started learning Chinese, I think we were obliged to memorize 20 characters a day yes. for one, first week. Mm -hmm. It increases, uh, second week maybe 30, third week 50, and like that. If I didn't finish my uh, memorization, she doesn't leave me. <laughs> and I can not go and play, uh -huh. okay? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, she was very caring, like uh, a mother, like a uh, big sister. Mm -hmm. So when she's strict, she's strict. Now you cannot go out. Then we listen to her. Back then, you mm. spoke very fluent Chinese, we heard. Because of her. <laughs> because of her, thanks yeah. to her. Yeah. How much do you still remember the language, speaking Mandarin? Like I can speak. Yeah,还可以说一点中文。可以，可以。哦。呃，我在北大，特别是我在北京大学的时候，有时候我给我的同学打电话，他家里的人接电话的时候，你你是谁？有的时候我说我是小王或者是李，他们他们就听听听不出
or just uh, Randa, Ramin Dashwe. The woman Fujin, the Nagashi Dashwe. This is what a base you want. In she tea, Chow Chang, the Nagar Vajina. Chang Wei. Chang Wana in Pao, Pao, in our Fishang Kwai, the Langshi. Well, teach your Naga Shaman, she be Jaha. In Zai Chongo, Chen Chen Ho, Jachi, like Gongzo, Shenghua, your Shidon Yan, the Shijian. No, no. In Zui, I, Chongo Wen Hua, or 中国人民的什么呢？说实话，中国的什么都喜欢。您有没有最喜欢的中国美食啊？我特别喜欢那个，呃，宫保鸡丁，因为那个呃有一点辣。呃，四川四川菜的那那种，因为跟爱说比那个口味是差不多的。一九九一年，学成归国的穆拉图以参赞衔进入埃塞俄比亚外交部。此后，他担任过埃塞俄比亚农业部长、议会联邦院议长，以及驻中国、日本、土耳其、阿塞拜疆等国的大使。二零一三年十月，穆拉图当选埃塞俄比亚总统。上任后，穆拉图大力借鉴中国的经济发展经验。The first official visit I had after becoming president of Ethiopia was, as you said, China. And when I met President Xi Jinping, definitely it was an honor and very pleasing for me. Dr. Toshomi, you've met with uh, President Xi before, and uh, you've noted, quote, seeing sincerity, humility, optimism, and vision as great qualities uh, in him as uh, the leader of this great country. Is there any interactions between you and President Xi that have left uh, a long-lasting impression on you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as you rightly said, President Xi is leader of this great nation. But uh, when we had the talk, be it uh, uh, with my delegation or tete a tete, he was taking Ethiopia and China from the same stage. Let us help each other, work together. I mean, Ethiopia is seeking a lot of assistance and help from China. And uh, President Xi was not only saying that uh, China can help you, can support you, but he was saying, if we uh, cooperate, if we work together, we all benefit. We, Ethiopia can uh, come out of uh, this uh, present day difficulties by its own people's hard work. So uh, humility definitely and uh, very, uh, uh, very sincere. You can uh, see from, you can read from one person's eyes, I saw all happiness in his eyes, mm -hmm. all uh, optimism, all uh, encouraging words. You know, uh, because he was saying, you know, China was also, China has seen these difficulties. If we work hard, it will pass. Uh, you previously mentioned gaining deeper understanding about China's uh, development approach from reading President Xi's book, The Governance of China. So can you share with us some of the highlights from your reading? Oh yeah, uh, actually when I look into it, uh, coming up with uh, correct policies and to uh, draw the policies from uh, objective realities of country, is very important. Mm -hmm. And it is not only having the right uh, policies, but that policy has to be people-centered. People has to be beneficiary. You have also praised China's development approach as example for Ethiopia. So in what way do you find China's um, approach and solution helpful and inspiring? Yeah, uh, you know, the objective realities China was in, and Ethiopia is in now, are different, totally different. Mm -hmm. And to learn from China's experience, mm -hmm. we cannot copy everything, but we can take a reference. Mm -hmm. And the good reference is what? It is to base our uh, planning, reasoning for our planning, you know, the 
development plan, you have got five years, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it can be three years for Ethiopia, it can be five years or ten years. But we have to be based on reasons, on objective realities of Ethiopia. Uh, one thing we can learn from China is be realistic, be people-centered, put the interests of the people as the center of your uh, plannings, mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that people benefit out of the reforms made. If people are not benefiting, still if poverty is not solved, then really it is not a true reform. In case of China, mm -hmm. I have seen the Chinese living standard of the 1970s, 1980s, till I uh, left China as a student. Mm -hmm. I know most of Chinese people were very, very modest life. Everybody was on, on bike, mm -hmm. but now I, what I see is maybe out of uh, 1,000 Chinese, maybe 300 are, have got vehicles, if I'm, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the impression. So people benefited from the reform. People benefited from the modernization. Mm -hmm. So people will going to support this, uh, the, the, their government. People and government work hand in hand. If people are not benefiting, then it's a lost case. Let's talk a little bit about uh, China, Ethiopia, bilateral relations, because the friendship between the two countries has been solid for decades. And in October this year, the bilateral cooperation, the bilateral relations between the two countries has been elevated to all-weather strategic partner. So, Dr. Tershomi, what is your vision on the future of um, this uh, tie? Yes, China. Uh, and Ethiopia relations really proved to be the all-weather comprehensive strategic partnership mm -hmm. uh, relationship. It is not something which uh, the leaders of the two countries just wanted to give this adjective to Ethiopia-China relations. It is a reality. Let us skip the 1970s, uh, just uh, to uh, the very start of diplomatic relations, after the 1990s, really the relationship uh, of uh, our two countries became gradually on the increasing, uh, on the increasing curve. We started up you know, with uh, more of trade increment, be it uh, this, well, the figure is small, but still there was a trade to, to, uh, to talk about. Uh, there was uh, not yet investment as such. Uh, but uh, the government-to-government -government relations was extremely good. Party-to-party -party relations was mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. And that opened the way, that cleared the way for uh, China and Ethiopia to understand each other. After the 2010s, even Chinese investors became very visible in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Many investment uh, investment opportunities were open for Chinese investors. Trade was increasing. Uh, actually, China and Ethiopia uh, became very important uh, as far as Ethiopia is concerned. China was its uh, biggest trading partner. Uh, many Chinese restaurants in Ethiopia, especially in Addis Ababa, and uh, even medical facilities, clinics or hospitals by Chinese private private ones. Mm -hmm. And still we have uh, Chinese uh, medical units which are sent by the uh, Chinese government. That is a very big support for Ethiopia. And uh, this all uh, when, you know, added up, it gave a very heavy weight to Ethiopia-China relations. Mm -hmm. Politically, we have, uh, we have uh, in very good terms. Right. Diplomatic relations, excellent. And uh, mm -hmm. Ethiopia has got many uh, natural resources, which really are very important for the fourth industrial revolution, mm -hmm. like the lithium or uh, nickel, very, uh, very uh, important earth elements are found in Ethiopia. And we are looking forward to have uh, Chinese investors in that regard also. We have got you something from Ethiopia. It's the coffee. So this is uh, the coffee beans from Ethiopia. And also maybe you want to take a sip. 
maybe it's a yeah. taste of home a little bit. Indeed. So, you know, even though China is thousands of miles from your home country, Ethiopia, but the economic and trade ties, as you just mentioned, between the two countries is growing. Yeah. And that has made it possible for many high quality um, African products, including the Ethiopian coffee, to enter into the Chinese uh, market. So, what do you think, Dr. Tushome, is the key in further enhancing the economic and commercial cooperation between the two sides? Ethiopia has really a very big potential for uh, further development to grow and to industrialize. Uh, Ethiopia has uh, human talent, human resources, natural resources, mm -hmm. but um, that, that is not well connected. Uh, through investment and uh, technical cooperation, scientific cooperation between China and Ethiopia, I think we can bring a, a big change. Uh, when we cooperate, it is for mutual benefit. So we want uh, Chinese investors also to be uh, profitable, to get a very good return on their investment, mm -hmm. so that Ethiopia benefits. Well, over the past years, the uh, projects under the Belt and Road Initiative, such as uh, the uh, Addis Ababa Djibouti Rail, has brought tangible benefits to the industrialization and urbanization along the road. So, Dr. Tushome, how do you interpret the significance of this uh, initiative? You know, the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, it really opened a very good corridor for Ethiopia's uh, modernization. If Ethiopia concentrates to open up industrial zones or uh, free trade zones along the railway corridor from Addis to Djibouti, over six, maybe six, seven hundred kilometers, that's a very big railway corridor. That is still waiting. That is uh, what we are thinking to have. And the surrounding is uh, the very rich, fertile lands for uh, developing ag agriculture. Agricultural products can be processed into modern industrial uh, inputs and uh, can, can be a source of Ethiopia's growth, especially in agricultural export. But ex it has to be value added. Mm -hmm. Value addition is extremely uh, important. For example, we produce cotton. If cotton is, uh, if Ethiopia is exporting raw cotton, mm -hmm. nobody is benefiting. But if the cotton is processed in Ethiopia to the extent of uh, going to textile and garment, definitely many uh, stages of value addition is there. Uh, many Ethiopians, many Chinese investors can benefit out of it and our two countries also can benefit out of it. But there has been some accusations, accusations that I think you have also heard about those projects have left uh, some African countries settled with debts or with uh, strings attached. How would you respond uh, to those um, accusations? No, I, I, I totally don't agree. I know some people say, yes, I mean, uh, they don't give a penny to Africa. They don't give a penny to investment financing, especially for uh, important projects like road or railway or port development. But uh, when we get it from China, they say, no, you are going to be debt trapped. <laughs> but if that, it is not debt trapping really. We need the project, but we don't have money. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever gives us the money to develop our country, the debt, yes, it is debt for today, but we, we can pay it back tomorrow. Because there will, we, we, we are hopeful that we can uh, make the projects to develop into the, into, to become uh, profitable. If there is profit, that, that means we have extra money to pay our debts. Mm -hmm. And Ethiopia is going to become a full member of uh, the BRICS starting next year. So how do you think Ethiopia's accession to this bloc will not only benefit its own development, but also how it's going to impact the South-South uh, cooperation? Ethiopia is uh, really very much grateful for uh, being accepted to be a member of BRICS. You know, Ethiopia can uh, benefit from the a cooperation uh, which it is going to have 
with China, with uh, India, with Russia, with Brazil, all the BRIC, former BRIC countries. And it also will, uh, will bring other BRIC countries together to be in a block. First of all, to assist each other in terms of investment, especially investment is very much where Ethiopia is looking into. It can be a source for expansion of trade and uh, it can be for uh, technical or scientific supporting uh, of each other. So Ethiopia is definitely going to benefit out of it and uh, that also will increase Ethiopia's, Ethiopia's uh, posture, Ethiopia's position in Africa and uh, globally, I think. And how would you evaluate the role of China in helping to support and maintain the peace and stability of the uh, African continent? Yeah, China's policy towards Africa or towards the developing world is very clear. China never intended to intervene in any other country's internal affairs. You know, all African countries, what they say is, they need China's assistance because Chinese assistance is not attached to any trigger. Mm -hmm. But in the case of China, really there is no any condition attached to the assistance or cooperation uh, given to African countries or any developing country. Only friendship. So in our interview, can you use Chinese and Chinese language to the Chinese audience and your Chinese friends to send you a blessing? I want to give you a Chinese people uh, okay, Dr. Shoumei, it was a really a great pleasure talking to you. It was really touching to hear all those uh, really impressive stories that you had, this very special bond you have with China, and also your very insightful views on Bella relations and uh, global issues. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.在采访当中穆拉图特肖梅多次表达了他对于中国的深情后裔回忆起在中国留学的日子他用中文告诉我们最爱吃宫爆鸡丁而且特别怀念跟同学们踢足球的往事他还说正是这段经历让他爆笑